Welcome back to the Discipline the Gens podcast. It is now NFL week three. After a very eventful weekend, I'm back from Las Vegas. Gino is remote. He won't be home for a couple more weeks. So it's, been an, it's been an absolute insane weekend. Before we get started, like, subscribe, make a betopenly.com account in the description. And reminder, we do have chapters on the bottom of the episode. We're on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. You can watch the podcast and get the video. You can listen on the road or at work. Check out all the Maddie Betts channels to see the Discipline the Gens podcast. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. I got to start off right off the bat, Gina, just because this happened last night. I'm at Circa. I have all these crazy bets. My Eagles are playing. I'm wearing my Saquon Barkley jersey. Talk about highs and lows. Last week, Saquon Barkley is my offensive player of the year. I'm on cloud nine. This week, he actually played very well all game, right? But of course, this is the NFL. It's prime time. He drops one pass, and now he's like the villain, right? Now he's like down down bad all of a sudden. I was very hesitant, but I'm getting to make Nick Sirianni my peasant of the week because I think could have went with the Cowboys. We could have went with so many different things. But at the end of the day, I'm going to make him my peasant of the week only because I'm critical of him. It's third and three. You run the ball twice if you have to. They have zero timeouts. There's a minute 40 left. You could run it on third and three, get a yard or two. Then you run it again on fourth and one if you have to. Because even if you don't get fourth and one, they have like 30 seconds to get nine to get 60 yards in a field goal and tie the game. Or if you have to, you kick it on fourth and one. And go up six points. It's either way, right? Is not even a bad answer. 100%. But what are your thoughts here? Because some people believe that Saquon's at fault, and if he just caught the ball, the Eagles are two and zero, and it wasn't a bad play call. Other people are like, you don't even risk throwing the ball. Even Peyton Manning on air said, you don't risk. We saw why you don't do risk you throwing it because you can drop a pass. So dropping a pass is way more likely than fumbling a yeah. handoff. So, dude, you run the ball. You take thirty something yeah. seconds off the clock. It's now under, you know, what's that take it to a minute? And then I think you kick the field goal. I think you go up six and you say, hey, you got to go 80 yards on me in, in under a minute. So that, yeah, I mean, yeah. Saquon catching. Okay. I run it twice there. I, is, there a, is there a better duo no, in the I league agree. to get you three yards in two plays than yeah. Saquon and Jalen? Like, I think it's asinine and, to throw the ball there. It, it makes no sense. Again, people aren't even talking about this as Saquon and just I, catches the and ball. And I go and the other way. Over. I go all the way back but to it is fourth crazy. and four in the first quarter when I text you. I said, what's your boy doing? You all went Kick a bit up nine with the field boy. Yeah. Yeah. Fourth and four. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I think, again, fourth and four. I mean, it, it is different. We A.J. Brown maybe, maybe crazy. do that. Maybe, it's just – the analytics aren't that far off on that play. You know, it, it is a zero zero game, but if you just believe in your offense, it's a short yardage scenario. Um, I don't know. That didn't bother me. I, I see both sides of it. I just don't understand why you don't run the ball at the yeah, end of the game there. If you got Jalen and Saquon, you got to get a And, and Jalen was scrambling plays, really so. well. I think I Doesn't texted that sense. was my biggest bet on the game over 40 yards for Jalen. Yeah. Yeah, no, he was. I mean, he's been running the ball very well. Uh, Saquon looks yeah. extremely explosive. I mean, it's a very good, it's a very good duo there. So, it is what it is. Um, but I had to make Sirianni my peasant of the week, even though the Cowboys. It was I couldn't believe I backed them, bro. Dumbest bet of all time. Fuck the Cowboys. This is what they do, right? When you think last week you were on record, their offense and defense is better oh. than you think, and then this week, what it happens? They come Both out sides. and shit the bed at home. It's just unbelievable. It's crazy what they did in Cleveland versus so. at home. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to turn it over to you. I think this is a segment we didn't cover enough of the first week or two. So I know we want to dial in on this, but let's go over our buy low, sell high. First of all, explain what it is to the people watching, and then let's dive into Yeah, the number one problem the with the NFL week. and public betting is recency bias. Maddie, no offense to Maddie and me, I think we're decent people. We both bought into Cowboys after one week. That recency bias got us. 
Yeah. Long story short, that's what this is. Yeah. You want to buy low against selling high. So the Pats didn't uh, – well, Shaq, I think the Pats did cover, so sorry for that top one. They were plus three and a half to four. They lost by three in overtime. So uh, going yeah. going down this list, but Broncos did not cover, and they're playing Tampa Bay that did. So the public's going to be both high on Tampa Bay and low on the Broncos. So it's a perfect way to get free points. So going through these, you'll see a lot of value. Let's stop it right there. If you're thinking of the Wong teaser, stuff like that, you'll find some great value in these plays. So long story short, I'd like the Denver to cover against the Broncos in terms of buying low and selling high. I also like yeah. to buy your Eagles, dude. I do. I'm not the world selling out on them. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, it's the ultimate buy low spot because it's also a sell high on the exactly. Saints who just routed the Cowboys. Exactly. In, and in then Dallas. Maddie brought up. Yeah. But AJ is still not going to be yeah. back, I believe, just as an FYI. And I saw it was like a couple weeks Going deeper with out. this buy low, sell high, guys. There's even layers to it. So, like, not covering by a half a point isn't the same as a dog winning outright. That's like the Saints are about as high as they're going to get. I have people. I've seen people in mainstream media put them as high as two in their power rankings. These dudes don't even know what power rankings are. I saw. I saw. I don't. I don't remember if it was Colin Coward or somebody, but who was it that said that like he they tr he trusts the Saints more than any team in the NFC right now? It's I'm a, like that's that exactly is such what a it is. There are still three teams. If they win it, they would be underdogged against. It. So I I don't get it, but yeah. I saw a tweet today that uh, Derek Carr only plays well in election years. <laughs> Dude, there's, <laughs> there's a because last time he played like this, it was like there's I a think system 2016 for everything. Or I don't know. There's a piece of data for everything. Or 2020. It's our know. job and your job to separate the bullshit <laughs> yeah. from the real shit. Uh, yeah. I, I will say, Giants aren't a bad one. They're really low, and people are going to be super high on Cleveland, what they did in Jacksonville, and also. I'll end with the ultimate, yeah. the ultimate by low Panthers. Panthers are going, I think, into Vegas, yeah. and Vegas just went into Baltimore. No, no way Baltimore starts 0-2. I'm going to be careful, uh, yeah. Survivor guys. Everyone that said Baltimore can't start 0-2 start yeah. said since he can't start 0-3. Both can. So. Mm -hmm. Now another, another system to look at. Teams that are 0 and 2, both straight up and against the spread, going in the week three, are typically like you know hit at exactly. like a 58 to 60 percent rate. So you have, uh, let's look at those real quick. We have the Dolphins, unreal. Dolphins getting five at Seattle. They're 0 and 2 straight up and 0 and 2 uh, against the spread. Or wait, are they 0 and they're ATS? They're 0 and 2. What's their record? They're one and one. Okay, so they're one and one. Let me see which teams are zero and two. So the Panthers. Okay, which again, I'll never fucking play them. I'm. I'm. I, I told myself it's the only team I won't buy low on all year. Panthers zero and yep. two against the spread this season and straight up. Right. Uh, Ravens. Ravens zero yep. and two straight mm -hmm. up and against the spread. Correct. Uh, so there's two teams. Are the Rams another one? Rams 0 and 2 straight up, yep. 0 and 2 against the spread. There's three teams. Um, what else? Jags covered I'm once, missing. so they're not. I think there's two more here. Pretty sure there's two more. Um, Titans 0 and 2 straight up, 0 and 2 against the spread. And oh, is it Giants? Giants. Giants. 0 and 2, 0 and 2 against the spread, and you have the Giants up there against the Browns. So that, that just further without a doubt solidifies that as a potential pick. So, so those are five spots to look at, and to anyone that's watching the show, you know, it doesn't mean blindly just bet them, but they're five spots to look at. Maybe if you're on the other side of any of those games that you maybe maybe even just don't don't even play the other side. If you were on the other side and then you hear that it's against those five spots, then maybe you stay away. Um, all right, let's move on to Sharper Square. I got three Three I want to ask Gino that come right to mind. The first one, the team we were just talking about that everyone is 
way too high on the New Orleans Saints minus two and a half hosting the Eagles. Is That's that square, dude? Or square side? Um, I'm all over these Eagles. <laughs> they're, they got, they're missing a star. That's what the news is going to be yeah. about. The Saints have a new offensive coordinator that I think he's in the top five NFL history of most points in the first two games. Saints couldn't be higher right now. And uh, although the Eagles got a good win versus um, the Packers, it involved an injured quarterback in a very close game. And now they gave up. They blew a lead late at home. So I, I think it's a really good buy low spot for these Eagles. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I gotta stop. I can't bet my birds though. Every time I bet them, they don't cover. When I when it, like week one, I stayed away, and then they they covered. I get it. It's stay away. Stay how away. It was last year. All right. Up. Yeah. Up next. Panthers plus five and a half at the oh, Raiders. Man. Sharper square. Raiders just won. It's sharp, bro, but it's stupid so, at the same yes. time. So guys, you gotta just be sharp. careful blindly betting systems because when the world knows about a system, the system's gone. You need to find the value in there. Man, Panthers were sharp week one and week two and got smoked in both. They're sharp here in week three, but I, I think I'm with yeah. Maddie. But you know what's crazy, though, is their losses haven't aged that poorly now, right? Because they got blown That's out by point. the Saints, but the Saints also blew out the Cowboys. Then they, you know, the they get blown out by the Chargers, beat the but the 0 2 Chargers, the 2 0 Chargers now. Exactly. Yeah, the two the two and O Chargers who have That's both a very won good point. double digits on both games. So it's a good it's a good number to get five and a half against the Raiders, but it's just the fact that it's the pant now Andy Dalton's playing. Yeah, exactly. Andy Dalton is starting. I no, believe, exactly. Right? I like it. I this might be I exactly. might be so, down to take the fucking Panthers. I think I talked myself into it only because of Andy Dalton. That's I will not the back here. Bryce so Young. It won't you happen. You see Dalton come in. It's a different team. You see you see what these We'll call them senior. No offense because they're younger than me, but what these senior QBs are able to do, dude, Darnold's, Darnold's looking nasty up in Minnesota. So Dalton, you know, was a stud. So, yeah, this is a really sharp spot, the Panthers. Yeah. All right, last one. This is a very interesting game. Ravens minus one and a half at Dallas, sharper square. This, so I flip-flopped on this game a few times, and I thought about it. I'm like, wow, they're making Dallas a dog at home. I get it. They just got blown out. But the Raiders just Ravens just lost at home. I truly think there is some deep, sharp money on the Ravens that is causing this. Otherwise, this would be Dallas minus one and a half. Mm -hmm. And the public would still be torn. So I hierarchy of order. I have the Ravens as the sharpest. Panthers is the second sharpest. And Eagles is the third. Or I guess Saints is square. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that game. Truthfully, <laughs> it's. A I think we're gonna. See, I think we're gonna see some absolute fireworks from the Ravens on Dallas's defense. I can see that. Yeah, the Ravens. I feel like are like historically a good bounce back yeah. team too. This is a that's a big game for them. Not going down 0-3. Wow. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know the data, but 0-2 yeah. is under 10% to make the playoffs. So you can't go on three. Right. <coughs> yeah, no, it's definitely, it's a, it's it a really desperation is. spot for both teams, honestly. All right, moving on. Buy or sell segment. The Saints offense Dude, is I'm buying it. Buy or sell that. Camara is still Camara. There. Yeah. <sighs> he's, he's oh, going to put sucks. my Saquon ticket at risk, bro. You know, did you see his preseason over under on touch Russian touchdowns was, was four, four and, and a half. half. And he already is four. That's their starting running back? Four and a half. I saw that it was on, on DFS. It was four and a half. Insane. Yeah, that's over my head. I, I'm not much of a fantasy guy, so I, I bet props every week. You know, if you're in DD yeah. with Maddie and I, I give out at least 10 props a week. It's purely on data, but I actually don't know how yeah. people set up their season long numbers. Because, like, you know, defense and offense has changed so much throughout the year. It's just not a skill of mine. Yeah. I think the offense is elite. I, I, I right. Is it going to end the year elite? No, I would sell it a little bit. I think it's a good offense, but they're peaking yeah. to me. They can't get much higher than they are right now. For sure. 
Uh, moving on, the Steelers' defense is good enough to keep them in the AFC North. Buy it. Buy or sell that. Dude, TJ Watt is just – I am too. Dude, he reminds me of the water boy. I want to, I want to get like a DJ a T-shirt or a jersey that says TJ Water Boy. Remember how Water Boy – you're young, Maddie, but remember how the water boy would like had voices in his head and he would come up to the line of scrimmage and was like yelling at himself and then he would just run through people? T, he's TJ Water Boy in my book. Yeah. Dude is an animal. To me, he's the – only defender more valuable than uh, Fred Warner. There. Uh, up next, Tua should still play football and not retire. Bye <sighs> Sorry for you young kids that love Tua and for Maddie's future pick here. He has guaranteed money. I read a really good quote. I'm a father, so I'm going to be emo for a second. Tua is the quarterback of his family. I I can't see any reason for him to play again, dude. He, these are cranial. Uh, yeah. They were talking about something about the way the cranial curls up and the way his body reacted, how deep these are, that they're almost seizure-like. Um, you've, have you seen some of, like, aging athletes, how, how bad they are, the Muhammad Ali's and stuff? Dude, these guys put their brains through hell and back. I, Something about Tua, and again, I'm not talking trash on Tua and kicking him when he's down. He, he doesn't fall right. His head hits the ground in a lot of plays where other quarterbacks just wouldn't get the concussion on the same play. So, again, I'm not calling him fragile. I'm not talking shit on dude. It's just not worth it. I've watched at least half of his um, concussions. They're on plays that shouldn't have been a concussion. So I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I always said, bro, because everyone always asks me like Jalen or Tua, like who is the better career. I was like, it's not even a skill set thing to me. It's more of a durability. I was like, I just believe Jalen. Jalen's kind of the nam. The Jalen's kind of the 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 hammer to get, the nail, and Tua is more of the nail getting sense. hammered when he's playing football. Like Jalen will put put his shoulder down and run over somebody. You know, Tua just like, well, like to your credit, what you just said, like he just falls in can, these weird ways and he doesn't slide properly and he hits his head. And so can I pay you a compliment, a Maddie? A lot of people either. don't know that Maddie played college soccer. Yeah. And I didn't play college, but I played in high school. And I'll tell you one of the things one of the oldest coaches taught me. Because, you know, as a kid, I was a little pussy. I would go to head the ball and I let the ball hit my head and it hurts. He's like, dude, you need to hit yeah. the ball yeah. with your head. And that's what right. I thought of when I yeah. saw Tua and your nail hammer nail. He's getting fucking yeah. thrown into the ground. He's not resisting. He's like a rag doll. Yeah. And again, I, I sound like I'm really beating him up, so I want to stop because yeah. it's, uh, it's insensitive. Short answer. Dude needs to hang him up, man. He has the money. Be a coach. Train people. Be a quarterback coach. Build it up. Don't, don't risk some bullshit for the rest of your life. The kid's fucking yeah. young. He's so young. Yeah, it's a it's a tough subject. I saw already so that he's not he's not even thinking about it's retiring. Probably, you know, he's a tough, know that tough is, Hawaiian or Samoan. Pretty or pretty Pacific crazy Islander. to me. So yeah. All right. Well, let's move on here. I want to talk. Let's do like a quick recap. Um, I had a shit week. I had a, a really shit week. I I did obviously off a of week one had the huge fifty k parlay winner. So I knew that the next week was gonna suck. That's how that's how betting goes. Um, but you had a lot of big wins, bro. You had the Saints over Dallas. Uh, I think you had Raiders money line. You had we both had Cleveland, Seattle, Jets, Washington, Arizona. You were on Pitt money line, which was good. Um, the over in the Chiefs game. I had Kansas City and Cincy. We both had the under in Houston and Chicago, and you had Atlanta plus six and a half. Uh, so you actually got that. Uh, oh yeah, that six and a half early. Dude, we right? had it. On the Falcons? Yeah. In nice, DD, yeah, we, had, nice we had our third double-digit unit week in a row. Dude, while the public's getting slaughtered, we're eating. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a really, really good week. I had some bad calls. Like I had, again, we don't talk too much about college. I had UCLA money line. I think they lost 42 to 6 or some shit. So, I, I don't go undefeated. I just <laughs> pick more winners than losers. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's it. My – my my best play, I would say, Pitt was hung. 
they, they hung the line for you not for you guys not familiar when you get a bunch of money on one side which Pitt had you know you get scared right because the the books are getting a bunch of bets on Pitt and they hung it and I gave out two units on Pitt and then 20 minutes before game time I said hey guys and I know you guys you're not gonna be shocked by this because you're, you're used to seeing 10 unit clown shows I told Didi, I said, let's go another unit on this. They hung the line at two and a half, but I don't give a shit. I have this true line at four. We got to take the, the free, not just point and a half, but huge hook on the three. Three is the most commonly one spread. So if I had to say my best win, it, it, it was pit in the sense that I don't bet three units a lot. And we're two and oh, I guess this month on three units. So again, I don't bet them a lot, but that was a good one. Um, Worst one, I would say my Niners live wasn't an official play, so, but I, I did tweet it out and say the Niners are plus 126 right now. I, I gave them out plus money, and I said, you know, they should be down 20 in this game, and now they're down six. If they can make Minnesota yeah. punt, they'll win this game, Right. but they didn't make Minnesota punt. Minnesota converted a third and eight and a third and seven. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's move on to Survivor. I'm going to do the Survivor of the Week for NFL Week 3. So, first of all, how would you do last week in Survivor? Boom, and boom. What are you looking at Everyone this week? that's uh, in DD is went 2-0 and in Survivor. I gave, out, I gave out the squares play possible. I said, guys, yeah. I'm betting the Chargers. I know they're going across the country, but you, as much as you want to pick winners, you want to go against losers. I said, there's just no way Carolina is a better team. Then Harborough week two, trying to go up 2-0 in a tougher division. So we took our first pick yeah. was uh, the L.A. Chargers. They dominated. And my second pick was Houston Texans. They didn't dominate. They had a chance to be up so much. That damn fumble that cost me on the cover. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we did 2-0. and And I told everyone, yeah. again, hindsight's twenty twenty, but I told everyone Baltimore will be the most picked play. You really want to avoid the most picked you want you play to win this, so you you don't want to be on Baltimore because you to be the most picked play. So it worked out really well. It was actually the perfect week in Survivor. Sadly, all the way down to Philly losing. These right. were all really good losses. Yep. Hundred percent. Yeah. What so are you I, at for week I'll give you my hierarchy. I I'll start with number one. I think the Bengals are the best pick. They will be the most pick. I don't like that it's prime time, and I don't like that they're on two, but I do like them to win this game. Uh, secondly, I like the Bucks. Now I look at the entire record every week. So you want to get, you want to save good teams. The Bengals are turning out just to not be that good of a team. So a team I wanted to save earlier was the Bengals. I don't want to anymore. Where I probably do still want to save the Bucks. But if you already use the Bengals, I like the Bucks. A lot of people won't like this one. I think the Jets are not as good as everyone thought. I don't care if they're heating up. I think their defense just isn't as good. It was more dominant last year. I wouldn't mind getting the Jets off my books. Um, I have two plays, so I, I think I'll be one of those first two. And Jets, probably Bucks, Jets, if I had to put my name next to it. And then the two more that I still like, um, if you need to use these, I like the Browns this week. And I actually like the Seahawks. Um, the Seahawks will be, I forget who they're up against, but they're getting uh, the Dolphins and they're getting a the backup Dolphins. quarterback. That's a dangerous one. I use Seahawks week one on one of my two picks. Uh, so it's not the one I love. Yeah. I just think the run game of the Seahawks, they get to come back home. So I like the Browns better. Right. The Seahawks are my fifth and lowest pick of my five. Got it. Yeah, I like uh, – I think my favorite one you said was Bucks. Tampa Bay, bro. Yeah, I mean they're minus six and a half at home against Denver. I think they easily win. It's gonna be hard for Denver to score against them. Even Denver. Yeah, Baker Mayfield. I saw. I saw a tweet said Baker Mayfield is a (laughs) a sober version of Johnny Manziel. (laughs) It really is. That's that's the perfect dude. The kid. He's still young and he's quick and he's yeah. He's he's balling. You got to be happy for him. He's looking good. He's looking good. The Bucks are the Bucks are two and zero against the spread. And they're they're a good team. I, I mean, again, just a little brag on our show. We gave out Bucks to win the South. I said, how the fuck are they plus three hundred? It's the same team that won it last year. Everyone comes in high on Atlanta. I would have loved Atlanta to lose last night for that bet, but here we are. 
Right, right. All right, let's move on to some Thursday night football. We got, what, the Jets and the Patriots. Jets are hosting the Patriots. Let me see here. Yeah, Patriots going to the Jets. Thursday night football. The spread is six and a half over under 38 and a half. And the t- and uh, the money line here are the Jets at plus two fifty, yeah. I believe. Plus two thirty five. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Patriots. Patriots plus two thirty five. Yeah. Jets so dude, what do you short like week in division. This game should be hard fought. Uh, I I do think the Patriots are going to have a impossible time scoring against this Jets team that I'm actually lower on. I'm lower on the Jets team than I was preseason, but still high on them against the Patriots. So. Yeah. Um, I'll contradict myself a hair. I like the Jets for Survivor. I like the Jets to win this game soundly. Don't like that six and a half. I feel like it's perfect, perfect for you know Jets up ten. They 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 win by three on a last minute touchdown, something like that, or Jets up thirteen. They win by six. Don't love the spread either way, but I do like this under. So under thirty eight and a half. I think both offenses struggle against each other's defense. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, yeah. The six, the the six and six and a half point spreads in the NFL. Well, especially last week. Oh I mean, my all god, the it was crazy last week on those types of numbers. I mean, it was a, it was a yeah. It was a, the public I, got slaughtered on favorites last week. I needed that to be week one. Like I think week the, one it was my dogs, and then it, week two was like the huge underdog week as far as covering the spread. Don't and quote money me lines. this, but I'm pretty sure the book said it was their best week one and two in the last twenty years. Dude, even the top five yeah, picks in the Circa Survivor, Circa Millions, you know, the against the spread one. Oh and ten. Yeah. Against the spread. Oh and five. Oh and five. Crazy. <laughs> These yeah. are supposed to be the sharps. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. What do you think about the total on this prime yeah, time? Game crazy here? boring. But dude, I, I really like the New England Patriots team total under. I know it's, it seems so square. The under is going to be fucking yeah. hammered. Primetime unders. Uh, this to me is a 23, yeah. oh, 23 max by the Jets. Max. More like a 20. So I don't know. 2016 kind of game. Yeah, 2016 is yeah. Where, I, where I land. I can see it. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not ready to take the Jets to cover that type of spread. So I would probably lean Patriots here, but I don't really yeah, love either side. Go, we can move forward. It, it ain't the best game. It's division short week, but it, it's going to be a defensive struggle. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. This is a Sunday, yep. or this is just a Sunday afternoon game. So we have the Giants coming to Cleveland. Giants six point dog over under 38 and a half. Another 38 point total. Uh, Giants plus 250 on Dude, the money line. There's here. a crazy stat line where the Giants are the first team ever to score three touchdowns and lose to a team that scored no touchdowns or some, some shit like that. So I don't know what the Giants did to lose that game, but they lost it. <laughs> so, and I think Washington's yeah. actually a good squad. So, you know, the Giants defense is, is not that bad. It's just their offense is horrendous. Their coaching is horrendous. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I this is the uh, one of the top buy lows in the Giants, so I don't want to be on the other side of that. So I like the Giants here plus six. Um, I almost said Giants money line, as crazy as that sounds. Just how inconsistent you put the, the mm-hmm. team of two weeks. But I wasn't ready to get there, so I, I, I really want to take the six, and I'm – Indifferent. I, I could see this one squeaking over. I could see this one being a twenty three twenty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cleveland's one and one against the spread and record. Yeah. They just look so different in two different weeks. It's hard to get a read on them. Where I do think the Giants can compete here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, and all these six point spreads, you kind of just lean dog automatically right There's now. There's gonna be a bloodbath week too with the all the favorites covering all the spreads. The public just they're always a week behind, man. They're always a week behind. Yeah, I can see that. 
All right, let's move on to the next game. Hopefully a better one here. We got uh, not too much better of a game, but <laughs> another six-point spread, basically. <laughs> it's like three in a row. The Broncos traveling to the Bucks, getting six and a half on the road over under 40, plus 280 on the money line. The first three games I know. on so, over like I'll, I'll be square numbers. side on this one. I actually have Tampa Bay winning and covering this spread. I watched that game with Denver and Pitt. Because I had it uh, as my three-unit play, so I was, you know, all dialed in. I get all, you know, nervous about that, and I watched the game. So aside from Pitt having an elite defense, what we saw is Denver's offense just isn't there, and that's at home. Bo Nix actually looks decent. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look good. Uh, I don't think I think he's going to struggle in Tampa Bay, and I think Tampa Bay is going to put up some points on them. I, I I really like the over in this game, and I like the minus six and a half. Yeah, over I think Tampa Bay puts up twenty seven. Low to me. Yeah, yeah. Dude, look what the Bucks, Bucks were able to do. They're... Or, I'm sorry, the Bronx. Yeah, the Bronx on. only scored and they're six good, good Steelers. elite defense. But look at what the Bucks defense did in Detroit. Yeah, dude, Denver's going to score freaking nothing. Now, mind you, I'm not saying six, but yeah. Yeah. 27 17. Yeah, kind I like of shit. the Bucks minus the points here, too. The over under is tough for me to get on either side of that. Um, but I do like the Bucks oh, minus the points here. We'll ride with the Bucks. Hopefully, Baker doesn't fucking ride. have a letdown game. Group ride Bucks. Which is possible. But all right, let's move on to the next game here. We got the Texans versus the Vikings. Texans are two and a half point road favorite, minus one thirty on the money line, over These under forty six. What do you think, dude? We're, our our teams are one and one, and I blame our coaches more than anyone. Uh, man, right? This is a why are the Vikings a dog? Pretty at high on these Texans, though? man. Without that fumble, they were about to be up. I think it was sixteen. Yeah. I think it was sixteen against a good a good Browns or Bears defense. Uh, I think people are too high on Minnesota. I'm going to actually take the Texans here. This will probably be square side as, as well. I'm expecting fireworks in this game. From what um, I saw, yeah. is, uh, is um, uh, Justin Jefferson out for Minnesota? He left injured. I don't know how injured he was, but it makes me like the over even more here. I know. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a weirdo. So Jeff okay, maybe he's just I don't injured, probable, that. something like that. Yeah, I like the over a little bit, not not crazy amount, just a little. But I I think Houston gets the job done here. I think Houston runs this one up. Yeah, Dalton Schultz is out. Dude, this could be the three and zero Texans. Collins. Nico Collins is, has an illness oh, as of the well, September 12th. Yeah, I need I those players in. Plays but too. Um, yeah, I think I think Texans get this job done. I do. And do you like the over? I like Texans most over second. Yeah. Uh, I think Houston's going to put up 30. Absolute fireworks. Dude, there were so many holes. Minnesota blitzes a lot. They're going to over blitz this young good quarterback. Texas has speed, multiple very good one on one receivers. I think I think Houston lights it up. Yeah, I mean Houston put up twenty nine on the road. Week They're going to do that again. Indianapolis, so I can see it. Yeah, I, I like the over here. I'm it's not going to touch a side, but I like the over. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to the next one. We got Chargers traveling to Pittsburgh. Chargers are a two point road dog, plus 120 on the money line, over under 35. This is and their a half. first like, real test. I guess Raiders home week ones are a test and a half, but this is a hard bot test. Get two amazing coaches going heads up. I'm going to go dog here. I'm going to take that one to one in Chargers. I'm impressed with these Chargers. And these are the two and a. Yeah. Harbaugh is such a good pickup. I feel like they just have. Yeah, this is two and over two and zero. This is a great game. This is one of these two teams is going to leave this game three and zero. Both these teams were shit on all off off season. Yeah. I think it's going to be the Chargers three and zero. 
Let's ride. The Chargers money line here. Let's I do think it. Chargers by a game winning game winning field, game winning like field goal in the fourth quarter for the Chargers. Maybe like a 23-20 or 20 Dude, I love it. What's the 35 and a half. Oh wow, 35 and a half. My God, get 2017. To, get to there by a hair. Chargers in the I, I think the Pittsburgh's going to struggle goal. to score against the Chargers too. It's going to be a good game. 17 is struggling to score. Yeah, that is. I like it. Uh, let's move on to the next one. We got the Packers versus the Titans. Green Bay, a three-point road dog. Plus 138 on the money line, over under 36 and a half. A lot of low totals this week. God, this game. Green Bay coming through against Indy. I feel so square on this one, but I'm going Titans. I'm going to go buy low and off the sell high. I think the Titans, are, are they could have won both their first games. Another 0 and 2 Titans. Well, this is, this is, yeah, this is a system play that hits at a 59% rate. You know, 0 and 2 straight up, 0 and 2 against the spread. Ultimate buy low spot. The home team needs a win. Yeah. yeah, Jordan Love for the Packers. I agree with you. I think you go take the Titans minus yeah, three. Yeah, I, I think, think they get it done what by we a saw in Indy is just how inconsistent they are. They were bombing. They, their their quarterback looked really bad minus those deep bombs against Houston. So he's just a very inconsistent, talented quarterback. Uh, I think this kid he's played bad too, man. But I I think he has talent. It's just gonna take some time. He needs to control that damn ball in the red zone. I think the Titans get it done. I think they get it done in a controlled manner with their defense frustrating the hell out of the Packers and them winning the game consistently. I like the under in this game, and I like the Titans. I like it. Yeah, I like. The, I'm on the Titans too. Move on to the next one. We got the Bears traveling to the Colts. Chicago, a one point dog on the road, plus one hundred four on the money line, over under forty three. Oh man, am I torn here? So. This defense is going to be Caleb's chance to shine. So I do think the Bears will be able to score in this game. Question is, are the Colts going to be able to do what they did versus Houston? So I I slightly lean Bears in this game. Bears money line, plus 104. I just can't get behind a total. I don't know what this quarterback for Indy is going to do. But I do think Caleb earns his first win. They'll be the two and one Bears of the win. You know, they beat Tennessee, even though Caleb didn't beat Tennessee. I, I think Caleb has his first good game. I'm actually going to be eyeing Caleb here on a lot of props. I don't know what to do with Caleb. I got to take the Colts at home. Finally, we disagree on our first one. Minus one. I think no, I so. Think, was that the first? Okay. I think there was one other. Um, yeah, I'm Colts here. I'm at home. I just I can't get over what like I've seen versus? out of Caleb so far. He's just kind of a weirdo. Yeah. No, I mean he needs to take. I mean, I'll sell one of my men's satchels when we launch the, the DJ Caleb department. Um, but no, I just the play. He just not. He I think he's going to take way more time to develop. And I was on him. This past week, I thought he could he could do something in that matchup, but I don't know. I just feel like I was a little higher on the Colts preseason than what they've shown so far. And then you know this is the game, zero and two, so zero you know, two record Very at important. home here. This is an important game. You got Caleb Williams and the it's Bears. True. Like you gotta win three this fucking and, game and can be with two of the losses at home. It isn't a good look. This is our first split. That's okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm going Colts here. Over or under? I'll go over just because I think this is Caleb's game. So I'm going to give him some love on offense. That the Bears put up, you know, 27, 25. Interesting. All right, let's move on to the next one. My Eagles versus the Saints. Birds, a two and a half point dog on the road. No AJ Brown. Now one and one on the year. Over under 49 and a half. The whole world is going to take that over. It's going to be one of the more fun games. I like the under. I I like the under a lot, actually. Right? It's. Yeah. 
The Eagles, the Eagles they can really run can. a seven minute drive. Their touch push is back if they're smart. And there's no AJ Brown, so they don't have the explosive like sixty yard plays. So like, yeah, they I'm gonna really ride with your Eagles. Fuck. In this game, keep the Saints off the field. Eagles money I line in the concur. under. That smack. We agree again, but I, I actually like the Eagles <laughs> the most. The under second. Twenty four twenty. I birds. think your boys get it done. Prediction. All right, consensus play. Moving on. Panthers going to the Raiders. Andy Dalton getting the start, getting five and a half on the road. Plus two twenty five on the money line, over under forty one. Going Panthers. Are you ML. okay? Andy so Dalton. we're on the same side here. I'm on it. I think so. I think so. I said I would never do it, but if my, my if favorite Andy's play playing, in this I'm game is it. the under forty one. I think Panthers defense shows up. Yeah. They've gotten they've gotten slopped around a little bit. I'm gonna take the five and a half yeah. though. I can't walk yeah, away from Panthers. all those points in a Raider defense is good. Right. Yeah. Panthers 0 and 2 straight up and 0 and 2 against the spread. Another decent system play here to take the 0 and 2 team in the in week three. I just think, you know, I think do you think the Panthers are giving up on Bryce? Dude, I just think, think I can't believe these coaches, these teams just keep hiring. Like, if you're a bad team with so many problems and holes, I just can't believe they keep drafting first round overall picks and thinking the quarterback's gonna do anything. You need a good D line and O line, and then you can need the talent at the end. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, this is the NFL. You, you you focus on all your other positions. You can get a veteran well, quarterback to come in. Th- and, that, and all the money. these money. If you draft a quarterback, you know how much money these people get now in the draft? The one overall pick gets paid like a fucking yeah. star. It's crazy how that worked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking Andy Your Dalton. money here, line bro. on points. Keep the points. I like the under the best. Line. Okay, okay. I'm, bo- I'm both. I'm both realistically. Yeah. All right, moving on. The Tua list Dolphins on the road here at Seattle getting four and a half. Plus 200 on the money line. Over this is still an electric half, Miami maybe. team. They got to do it for Tua. Mike McDaniel is a former Niner. He knows Seattle. I like the over the best in this game. The over 41 and a half. Yeah, it's... Without two, it's still yeah. still a lot of weapons. Dude, the run on the game, the talent. I, I again, I feel like I'm ripping on Tua too much. I feel like a heartless prick. I was critical last year when he hit the yards record that some of those balls were underthrown. He was just huck, hucking it up, and the receivers came through. So I actually think Miami can win this game. I know I gave out Seattle on the fantasy. That was my yeah. least favorite. Again, it's just the math of the team. I, I won't have Seattle in a. And fantasy, but I'll take the four and a half just to be safe. But I, I do like the over 41 in this game. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Seattle, they're two and zero, but they haven't covered the spread yet. And both their games have gone over this number 23, 20 to the Patriots, 26, 20 to the Broncos. And I think this is a good buy low spot on the Dolphins. Everyone, everyone's going to be low on them without Tua. But you put a competent QB, hopefully, in there and just, you know, play in the system, use the weapons, get the run game going. This is a very small total still. Um, so I, I think Miami can win out right here. I think the game can go over, but I'll take the points at the end of the day on this one. Let's do it. Let's move on to the next one. Gino's 49ers, a seven and a half point road favorite. You don't see that every day in the NFL. Over under 43, minus 3. I'm nervous for this line. game. What do you think here? I left my Niners off Survivor for this reason. It'll be a home game for us. We we take over that stadium. They're out both their top receivers. That's why the spread is what it is. I think we're out both Debo and CMC. Obviously, Mason's are good backup. It's going to be a very interesting game. What can we do without our talent? I think we win this game with defense. I don't like us to cover seven and a half, but uh, I, we really could win this game 23 13. 
really could. 27, 14. Yeah, I, I like you guys. Yeah, I yeah. think there's a reason it's seven and a half. Like, I and like you guys. We need this game. this game. We need to be two on one. Honestly. Not to... The Rams did just get yeah, blown exactly. out by 31. They're, they're Rams the are in a bad spot. I like the under here most. Interesting. Favorite play under. I do lean Niners covering by Rams team total going under. Yeah, it's just crazy. The 43-point total. Rams just gave up 41 last year. I know. They didn't score <laughs> the any. Cardinals. They scored three or something. It's a scary number. I'm going Niners. Not a baby. I'm staying away from the total. All right, up next. For sure. Probably game of the week For here, sure. I would say. You're pretty, pretty close. Ravens, a one-and-a-half-point road favorite, over under 49. What are you thinking? <sighs> I'm going Ravens, dude. They're both by low spots. I am too, bro. But I just like every time I fade the Cowboys, they this is a huge to do well. You know, there's a huge fade, spot. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go Ravens pretty soundly here. I, I I like I like the under better. Oh, no, I don't. What am I even saying? Forty fucking nine. Both these teams. No, I, I'm just Ravens. I change everything. Just Ravens. Minus 115 money line. All that value, all day. Yeah. Ravens 0-2 straight up, 0-2 against on the, the road. spread. A good buy low spot on them. Can these Ravens really start? I mean, we got to ask yourself, what's more likely? The Ravens start 0-3 or the Cowboys 1-2? Exactly. 1-2, 1-2, both Ravens. teams after this game. Yeah, that's what I like it. All right, move it on. Lions traveling to Arizona. This is actually a pretty interesting game. Lions are a three point road favorite. This is a crazy number. Really? I know. Just did. Lions Over losing at home. Two and a half. It, it is a good buy low spot on this the Lions. Is crazy. You're getting them pretty cheap here in Arizona. Yeah. I believe this is the Arizona highest total. The rush D was supposed to be weaker than it looked against the Rams, but the Rams were in shambles. So. Uh, I, I'm gonna take the Lions here. I'm gonna go Lions minus three, and they, I think the Lions get it done by seven. It's hard, right? Yeah, the Cardinals it's so almost hard beat to Buffalo. Not like the Cardinals they, here. They won a really good game, and they almost won. Buffalo looks good. So these aren't these aren't the Cardinals that they you know the same Cardinals from two years ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what to do with this game, truthfully. That's just a weird spread. It really is. It's a it's a power ranking spread though. I have the I have the lines above them. Cardinals in power ranking, so it makes it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's just more about how much stock you put into the 100%. Cardinals performance this past week. But you, so I guess the, the, the lines is probably the, the right yeah, value, the right tough, side as far tough as value. Game to take. Like the lines got worked by Tampa Bay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I believe this is the Sunday night game. Uh, we have we have uh, the Chiefs traveling to Atlanta, three and a half point favorite for Kansas City, minus one sixty five on the money line, over under forty seven. What do you think? Atlanta money line, ATL, Dirty Bird money line. This is probably going to be one of the squarest plays by the public. They're going to absolutely decimate. They're going to hammer. The Chiefs. Everyone that loses a penny all Sunday. Yeah. I feel and I feel like teams that like have that comeback win such and a momentum low, carries into the next week. Oh, such a low I mean, mind you, I guess by low sell high technically the Chiefs didn't cover and Atlanta did. So I don't like that. We're up against the system here, but I just think the public is going to absolutely chew on that. I lost money all day. Chiefs minus three and a half need to save me. Yeah, no, I like Atlanta as well, bro. I I was high on them preseason. Um, you know, when I really look back at at yesterday, it's like Falcons aren't a bad team to lose to. I agree. It's just how it happened. But like, we didn't have our best receiver. You know, every, and but Atlanta is just like they didn't play that well early. But like, you can just tell they're a good team. The run game's going. Kirk Cousins is more than competent. They have weapons down the field. Like. 
I think they're a good spot here at home. Like you're gonna give them, they're gonna give them I three agree. and a half at home. That's crazy. The Atlanta man. defense looked tough. They looked fast. Spot. They were in a lot of plays, and and Jalen moves well. Jalen runs better than Mahomes. Yeah, you know, Mahomes racks up yards. He does because of respect for his arm. But yeah, agreed. All right, moving double, on to double I Monday night two Monday night games, right? Double Monday Night Football. First one, Jags versus oh. Buffalo. Jacksonville's plus five and a half on the road, plus two thirty on the money line. Over under forty five and a half. Damn. You think this is another ultimate buy low. Now the the Bills are two and zero, oh, but one and one against the spread. The Bills get all that extra rest. Jacksonville is now zero and two. They should have won game one versus Miami. It's very uncomfortable. But you want to lean Jacksonville on the points here. Don't love the bet. Yeah. What was their what was their head to head last year? It was this under makes you know everyone's crazy. gonna think that Buffalo should have hit that over should have hit in Buffalo, Miami. So my favorite play in this game, under 45 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, I could see Buffalo holding Holding the Jags I really like the under. My favorite play of this game, under 45 and a half. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going Buffalo in the under here. I'm going Buffalo 23. Oh, baby. 23. Damn, so the 0 3 Jags. Those poor Jags. <laughs> it is crazy. <laughs> All right, moving on to the last game of the week. We have the Commanders coming to Cincinnati. Again, eight and a half points, plus three eighty on the money line, over under forty six and a half. Since his defense looks so fucking good against Kansas City, and they blew. So, oh, I think it was the right call too, even though Mahomes gets a lot of bullshit calls. I actually think there were some bad calls earlier on the reverse interceptions. Uh, yeah. I think Washington's going to have a hell of a time scoring against the Cincy defense. I really do. Um, Oh, I'm going to lay the eight and a half. Not something I do commonly <laughs> since he's in desperation mode. I, I hate betting like this because they can easily any given Sunday. I think since he knows they need this game to turn their season around, they get a rookie quarterback in their house. They played horrendously week one. They played really good against a very good Chiefs team week two. They, I think they dominate this game. I don't like the energy, by the way, of Cincy. I don't like Jamar. Jamar's throwing a little temper change. He's being a little prima donna on that sideline. His interviews after and shit, I hate that shit. Um, but I'm going to go Cincy yeah. winning this game soundly start to finish. It's hard to take Cincy to cover right? that type of spread against anyone, though. And the thing is, last week they were such a good bet. Just because know, they always play low. Kansas City so well. like, And they were coming off such a dud performance Agreed the week completely. before. It was so obvious. But now I can almost see some regression. I'm going with Commanders here, but I hate it. But I'm going to take the points. I'll take the points here. What do you like on the over-under? Uh, you know, I... Uh... I'll give this out on the day of, but uh, candidly, I, this is exactly where it should be. I think Jaden's such a talented quarterback that they get some points, but I think since he jumps out early on against Washington, just the fact that the Giants were able to get three touchdowns against Washington, I'm going to have since he getting, you know, four. So, yeah, 28 20 doesn't surprise me any more than 30 20. So, I really feel like it's right where it should be. If you made me, I'm going to go over just because people haven't been overly impressed with Cincy's offense. I think Cincy's offense comes out and lights it up. I could, yeah, I could see that. And then a backdoor cover. I'll give you that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move on to daily fantasy sports and some fantasy football picks. Let's bring Trevor onto the, the screen here. I'll start with that game you guys just ended at. For me, it's whether T plays or not. If Higgins is in, 
th- I think they're going to cover pretty strongly. Um, that's it's affected their offense. Um, TN is massive, so I uh, I'm going to watch. No, I, I can't get any. You know, we can't get any DFS lines from that yet. Um, still early in the week, uh, but we do have Thursday night. So uh, I think. Both running backs are going to eat Thursday night. Um, I like Brees in that game. Uh, I got him for an anytime touchdown, two touchdowns. And then Stevenson's over 15 and a half receiving yards in that game is just off. That line should be 19, 20 and a half. Uh, and it's, yeah, I, I think it's going to close there. So grab that now. Um, but that's his, you know. Who else? They they got Polk. I like that kid, but um, I think they're going to have to put up, you know, try to put up some points to keep up with the Jets. And you can see, like, the second game, the Jets had a little more, you know, Rodgers getting a little more comfortable, and, you know, Brees is a monster. So um, they're going to use him receiving. They're going to use him running. uh, They're going to use him on every side. So uh, there's a couple lines that I don't understand this week. Um, right now we don't have a ton of props for the games. Um, I think everybody's going to be all over new Orleans, right? Kubiak running the offense. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think they should be three point favorites over Philly. Um, I just don't, I don't think they should be, especially if AJ's back again, need AJ in there. Uh, that's an interesting spot. Rocking my, I don't think he's coming back yet. Is he? I think they said two weeks. And they might again. Yeah. I'm. I, I don't know if the, right. I, too important role in the offense. Um, so I'm interested to see. Um, I think Houston finally gets it going versus Mini this week. Uh, I think this is. I think CJ finally gets it going. Um, there's a really the, one of the few things you can get right now uh, under. Uh, you know, no ints under a half interception for CJ. Uh, it, you can get right now for Houston. So I like that spot for him. Uh, I think that's a really good spot. Um, everybody is going to be all over Tampa. I, I think Tampa is going to be the survivor darling. G and I were talking about this, you know, over text the last couple of days. Um, you know, so I'm I, I'm not going there. We already burnt Tampa. We burnt Tampa week one. Uh, we thought that was a better spot for them. Um, I'm I'm probably going to be all over Seahawks, like all over DK props um, versus Miami. Uh, I DK should just be able to eat versus them. Uh, and now obviously, right. No, to, uh, like just, you know, the injuries are killing them. Um, I like, I, I think the car, right. The cards are showing they're turning their offense around. I think there'll be fireworks. That was our big, you know, survivor pick and cover last week was we had the cards. Um, I, I Detroit's front is quite a bit different that they're facing this week. Um, so, but I think uh, Detroit will be able to put up some points on them. So, uh, probably like Monty touchdowns. Uh, I- I'll be looking for that. G- Gibbs touchdowns. Those would be a good spot DFS wise. Um, the Rams are right. I mean, the Rams are dead. No Puka, no Cup. Um, you know, at this point, it's you know go tank and go get a quarterback to replace Stafford. Um, so they always, you know, that O line is a mess. You know, no Darnold on their front. Um, even without Debo and CMC, right? Mason stepped right up. Um, and we have, you know, that's Levi South. We have played very well there. Uh, so I'll probably be on some of those overs. Um, I'm dying to see the Ravens Cowboys lines. Like, uh, are the Ravens really going to, you know, start out 0 you know, 3? Like, so, yeah, it's, you know, are they going to, you know, are they going to, go there. I think there's, uh, I think Zay should be able to get open versus them. I think that's going to be a really good spot. Um, CDO have a spot and then I'm, everybody's going to be all over Casey. I just heard, heard you guys talking about it, right? Like give me some Jean props versus them. Uh, they'll use them running. They'll use them receiving probably over under receiving yards. And then, uh, big play. I'm going to go back up. Um, I think neighbors gets it going against the Browns. Um, I, I think, right. They got one real target there, so they're going to take advantage. Uh, and then I'm still, 
Uh, I'm going to be on Richardson unders. Um, I, I'm not a fan of that kid. Like he's, I, I think he's fun to watch, uh, but I, I'm going to be on Richardson unders in that game. Where'd you guys, uh, where'd you guys land on uh, Green Bay and Tennessee? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. That's a weird game for me. I think we were on Tennessee. I think Gino was on Tennessee. I think we lose Gino. Yeah, yeah, that's a weird that game's just a weird spot, right? Like yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think there's a reason for Green Bay to, you know, push love back in that game. Um, you know, give him another couple weeks, let him get healthy. Uh I don't know what, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do there yet. That's uh that's too weird a spot for me. Um, but I like your I like your Eagles this week. Um, you I, always I like the Eagles. Gonna... I think you're an Eagles fan uh, deep down, bro. Uh, I mean, they're not the Niners, but they're, I mean, look at the offense. If they're healthy. Yeah. And I just, I think it's every, listen, Kubiak has done an amazing job. Car looks great. Right. Like now keep in mind, they got to play Carolina week one. So, and, and, but kudos for trouncing, <laughs> to, to just, just a trouncing this last weekend. But, um, I'm interested to see here. I think everybody's going to be really high on them. Uh, and then the other game, I, I don't think I'll have a lot of props. It is the Chargers and Steelers. I'm probably not going to go there a ton. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll start getting lines Wednesday, Thursday. We'll start getting stuff out. Um, you know, Maddie will have some fun DJ and stuff for you guys. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll get some props here. But like I said, I like the running backs Thursday night. Uh, give me some Brees. Give me some Ramondre. And, uh, I think Brees is. I think Brees is going in twice on uh, on Thursday night. Hundred percent. All right, bro. Well, good luck to All you right, this sweet. week. You too. All right, my man. See you. All right, guys. We lost Gino, but we will see you guys next week for NFL Week Four. Good luck to you and all of your bets. <laughs> <laughs>